Welcome to the Kidney Education and Research Network Journal Club. Today, we will discuss some recently emerging data on statin use in dialysis and try to put it in context of everyday clinical practice. So we know that according to guidelines, the 2013 American College of Cardiology and American Heart Association guidelines do not give any specific recommendations regarding statin use in patients on hemodialysis or peritoneal dialysis. And similarly, the National Lipid Association of United States in its 2014 guidelines also did not make any specific recommendation. The 2014 Kidney Disease Improving Global Outcomes guidelines on lipid, in patient, lipid therapy in patients with chronic kidney disease said that statins should not be initiated in patients on dialysis but can be continued in those already receiving them at the time of dialysis initiation. Now this recommendation was based largely on data from SHARP trial which had shown that statins reduced cardiovascular and whole cause mortality in patients who were not on dialysis but there were previous studies uh, including the 4D study and the Aurora trial and the maintenance dialysis subpopulation in the SHARP study which has shown that statin use in dialysis population itself did not have any beneficial impact on uh, outcomes in terms of mortality as well as cardiovascular uh, endpoints. So now let's look at some of the recently emerging data. So here is uh, a meta-analysis which was published in Lancet Diabetes Endocrinology. Uh, it used individual participant data from 20 randomized trials and looked at the effect of statin use uh, in patients uh, who have different levels of kidney function. So these are the summary findings. What it showed that if you stratify patients according to their GFR values, so you have uh, these four categories or rather five categories, GFR, estimated GFR greater than 60, 45 to 60, 30 to 45, less than 30, and those on dialysis. So if you look at all the endpoints, major coronary event, coronary revascularization, stroke, and major vascular event, you can see that as the GFR decreases, the beneficial effect of statin reduces, and at uh, eGFR of uh, starting between 30 to 45, uh, it stops becoming statistically significant. So even though uh, the uh, effect of statin in the overall population of CKD patients is significant, but in patients who have uh, relatively low GFR value, and especially those who are on dialysis, there is no benefit of using statins. Uh, similarly, uh, vascular deaths, non-vascular deaths, and any deaths, the same pattern holds true. So the LDL cholesterol uh, lowering was not shown to be beneficial in these uh, subpopulations, that is subpopulation of patients on dialysis. So let's look at uh, a new uh, aspect which has not been studied in greater detail, which is the impact of statins on vascular calcification in patients with chronic kidney disease. So we do know that in general statins are thought to promote plaque repair. And what is this process of plaque repair? This process entails a decrease in coronary artery plaque volume and a replacement of the lipid core of the plaque with fibrosis and calcification. So it's in a way a healing process. Now randomized controlled trials in patients without kidney disease have shown that statins actually cause progression of coronary artery calcification, which will be thought to be uh, intuitive because uh, statins uh, promote plaque repair and calcification is an inherent component of this plaque repair. Uh, it's also important to note that this progression of coronary artery calcification in patients without kidney disease has not been shown to be associated with any increased risk of cardiovascular events. Now, we do know that coronary artery calcification is a sum of calcification in the intima as well as media of blood vessels. Medial calcification increases vessel wall thickness, stiffness and leads to uh, LV uh, dysfunction, especially diastolic dysfunction and heart failure. Whereas both medial and intimal calcification 
can narrow the lumen and can lead to luminal obliteration and thereby cause uh, the classical atherosclerotic uh, cardiovascular events. So here is the paper which is of interest to us today. This is a paper uh, which came from uh, Stockholm led by uh, Peter Stenwinkel and Bengt Lindholm. Uh, they looked at uh, the effect of statins on vascular calcification in patients with chronic kidney disease. So they uh, enrolled 240 adult ESRD patients. The mean age was 56 years and 63% of the uh, population were males. Uh, they underwent all of them uh, a CT scan for coronary artery calcification and baseline. In 35 subjects, it was repeated after one and a half years. Now, so far as the baseline characteristics are concerned, 21% of these 240 patients had baseline coronary artery disease diagnosis, 38% were on statins, uh, remarkable 64% were taking either ACE inhibitor or angiotensin receptor blocker, 60% were on beta blockers, and 85% were on vitamin D analogs. So these are the main findings. So what they showed was that high coronary artery calcification score at baseline was associated with lower survival. So this is five-year survival. You can see the low coronary artery calcification, much better survival compared to high coronary artery calcification. And you can see that p-value is highly significant. What then they did is that they separated patients who were on statins and patients who were not on statins in this high and low coronary artery calcification score. And they showed that uh, being on statin was not associated with any change in the outcome uh, if the patient belonged to low coronary artery calcification or high coronary artery calcification score. Then they looked at uh, inflammatory parameters and again they showed that inflammatory parameters also did not change the impact of coronary artery calcification in that uh, both uh, non-inflamed subjects uh, uh, or inflamed subjects with high, high coronary artery calcification continue to have poor outcomes. So here is the key finding of this particular study. They looked at the basal coronary artery calcification score in patients who were taking statins. And since the largest proportion uh, or population was on simvastatin, they separated simvastatin into one group. And patients were on other statins in another group. And the third group, of course, was non-statin users. And they showed that the coronary artery calcification score was higher in subjects who were taking any type of statins. So this is something which is really important uh, because we do know that uh, coronary artery calcification is associated with uh, worse long-term mortality. Then they uh, did multivariate analysis to look at uh, the association of statin use with coronary artery calcification after correcting for a number of factors. And they found that the factors that remained significant were high age, uh, sex, and statin use. So these were the three factors and fourth, of course, and the presence of diabetes. So these were the three factors which were associated with increased baseline coronary artery calcification. So out of the 35 subjects who had a repeat coronary artery calcification score, they compared the progression of coronary artery calcification by looking at the delta coronary artery calcification, which means the difference between the score at follow-up and the difference uh, and the score at baseline and they found that statin users again exhibited a faster progression of coronary artery cal or uh, not faster but greater progression of coronary artery calcification scores. As a part of their study they also did an, uh, a cell culture study in which they looked at vascular smooth muscle cells and they looked at the effect of statin on vitamin K synthesis. So here on the right side, you can see that uh, when they gave K3 and looked at uh, menaquinone, which is uh, which is an active form of vitamin K uh, in vascular smooth muscles, they, they showed that uh, there was a, a administration of the substrate, which is vitamin, uh, which is K3, led to an increase in menaquinone synthesis. But when it, it was done in presence of statin, this increase was inhibited. So uh, vitamin K. Uh, uh, metabolism is affected by the presence of statins. So now let's come back and, and discuss what does all this mean. So what could be the pathogenesis of pro-calcifying effects of statins? We do know that statins reduce uh, uh, cholesterol levels by inhibition of uh, HMG-CoA reductase inhibitor. 
Uh, and its uh, pleiotropic effects are thought to be mediated by an inhibition of protein prenylation, which leads to altered cellular signaling. And this has been shown to lead to stimulation of vascular smooth muscle cell apoptosis and also calcification. As, as we discussed, uh, statins in, uh, alter vitamin K metabolism by inhibiting conversion from K1 to K2, which is dependent on mevalonate pathway, which is impacted by statins. Vitamin K2 is essential for uh, smooth functioning of calcification inhibitors, such as matrix glab protein and Rothers protein 6. We do know uh, already that patients on dialysis have significant vitamin K deficiency because vitamin K is a water soluble vitamin as, and is lost during dialysis. So statins might compound pre-existing vitamin K deficiency. What is interesting here to note is that this, uh, this effect has been shown to be limited to hydrophobic, statin, hydrophobic statins such as atorvastatin and uh, simvastatin. Hydrophilic statins such as pravastatin may not have this property and perhaps may not be, uh, may not be a procalcific statin. So what are the final thoughts? Uh, ESRD perhaps is a state of statin resistance because it is possible that there are other pathogenetic processes which may be less affected by statins. What could these pathogenetic processes be? They could be complex lipid abnormalities in patients with end-stage kidney disease, such as increased lipoprotein atherogenicity by oxidation or carbamylation of the lipoproteins, which are not affected by uh, statins. And the second factor is inflammatory stress itself, which leads to increased intracellular cholesterol synthesis, which is also not affected by statins, uh, as opposed to extracellular cholesterols. Uh, having said all of this, we still don't know the answer to the following question. Uh, even though statins are not beneficial for patients on dialysis in general, would statins be still beneficial for a subgroup of ESRD patients? such as those with highly elevated LDL cholesterol levels or a previous history of atherosclerotic event. This uh, question will require another randomized control trial to answer, however, because the number of these patients is likely to be small, so recruiting uh, patients with a history of atherosclerotic event or elevated LDL cholesterol on a non-statin arm is probably going to be unethical, so we will perhaps not have an answer to uh, this particular question. Uh, having said that, we do need to remember that uh, despite the recommendation from the various guideline groups, a large proportion of our dialysis patients continue to receive uh, statins and we should be aware that perhaps at least a subgroup of these patients might actually be getting harmed by statin use and be getting benefited. Uh, thank you very much.